Thank you for joining us today. Um, we have our Herbert Employer of the Day, USDA Farm Service Agency. So we're joined today um, by Greer Gill, and I'll go ahead and let her get started by introducing herself and just giving a brief overview of her current role. Hey, hi everyone. My name is Greer Gill, and I am with the Farm Service Agency, uh, working out of the state office here in Nashville, Tennessee. And um, I am the outreach coordinator and also the public affairs coordinator for FSA. And um, what that means is that I work with all of the um, public affairs, which is doing like press releases and things like that to get news out to our producers. And then outreach is to any of our underserved farmers. Um, so we try to make sure that we uh, make agriculture one big family that includes um, absolutely everyone who wants to be involved in it. So we we do try to do some outreach to everyone. And outreach also includes recruiting. So trying to get new people into the agency so that we can um, reach farmers and help them. Awesome, thank you so much for joining us today, Greer. We're really excited to have you here. Um, so my first question, can you just tell us a little bit about the Farm Service Agency, you know, where, what the company or organization does and where some of those primary locations are. Okay, so um, Farm Service Agency is part of the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture. And uh, we are the section that is involved with um, really money to farmers, just getting that really important thing, money. Um, so part of our organization works with loans to farmers. Um, we do uh, micro loans and direct loans to farmers so that they can um, keep their operation going. And then the other half of our agency is involved in um, farm cost shares and subsidies. Um, so for instance, you know, we've been going through the uh, coronavirus pandemic. We have been getting um, relief aid to farmers who have been affected by the market um, collapse. And so that is, you know, one instance of what we've done, but we also help in the case of other disasters such as um, storms or anything like that, um, wildfires, um, just for instance, floods. And then, um, you know, we also just help with um, your more traditional subsidies, things like, you know, um, soybeans, wheat, that kind of stuff. And we really just try to keep um, farmers on their farms because family farms are the backbone of our, our country. So. Awesome. And where are some of those primary locations um, for our students? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we have um, a lot of county offices. We have 59 county offices. So some counties share an office, um, but those are spread all across the state and you can find them um, on the Tennessee FSA website. And um, I'm located here at our state office in Nashville, which is centrally located. Um, but we have offices all across the state serving our farmers. And um, it is usually not more than one or two counties away from anyone. Awesome. Lots of great locations then for students to explore. Um, mm -hmm. So can you describe your the company culture to us and why you like working for the Farm Service Agency? Absolutely. So um, we are a government agency and um, that is different than many other places of work. Um, but I think that it's a really excellent company culture. It's professional. Um, but it is always with an eye towards service. So, you know, we are serving the taxpayers of the United States and we always have to keep that in mind. You know, if we are giving out money, it is it is hard earned um, taxpayer money. So we always are very responsible with that and take that very seriously. And um, I think you sort of have to have um, a service mentality to work in um, government. You know, you have to want to be part of um, that greater whole that is um, serving the farmers and serving the people of the United States. So, um, you know, I think that's a really valuable company culture and it really lends itself to people who want to be, um, you know, part of something bigger and want to feel like they are really making a difference. Awesome. Sounds like a great um, organization to be a part of. Um, so switching gears just a little bit here, um, what do you expect from students during um, recruiting events? And so that could be virtual and hopefully, you know, when we transition back to in-person, um, highlighting some of those expectations as well. Um, really just engagement. You know, we, we don't know what we don't know about people. So um, people who come up and want to actually you know, talk to you, tell you about themselves, tell them about, you know, some fun things that they've been involved with or interesting things. 
um, you know, people who can sell themselves because really it comes down to making me believe that you are worth, <laughs> you know, um, you know, being part of our agency. So absolutely engagement and, and being able to make that hard sell. Um, and, and I think, you know, just general, um, customer, well, c customer service is a really big part of what we do, you know, reaching out to customers. So people who have a sunny demeanor and who are able to make general conversation, that is something that is really valuable and that we look for in our, in our students that we, we talk to. Awesome. Um, so what kind of jobs and internship opportunities are currently available um, with the Farm Service Agency? Okay, well, right now we actually have um, openings on usajobs.gov um, for loan assistance and also for program technicians. So those are people who work in the county office um, helping to process loans and helping to process our farm programs. Um, but we also every year do offer internships and we're actually past the deadline for that. But if anyone is looking for next year, we usually post those towards the end of the year and the deadline is typically in January or February. And um, other things that we have offered that are not open right now, but could certainly be open in the near future um, are our actual loan officers. So people who process through loans, um, you know, and can be managing quite a bit of money. So it's um, a very responsible position but it certainly is very valuable if anyone is very um, talented in the business realm. And then we also have people who are um, county executive managers. And I apologize if you can hear the siren going down the road right now. Um, I am on Broadway in Nashville, so there's always fun noises. <laughs> um, but I say county executive managers, um, they are the people who um, are in charge of our county offices and handle um, the allocation of our subsidies and our cost share programs. So there's always a lot of really good options. And, you know, also if we have anyone um, who is looking to get strictly into farming, um, it doesn't mean that you can't be involved in the USDA. We actually have something called the county committees. So if you are an active farmer, you know, if you're going to be going back to the farm full time, um, that is great. And we need that and we encourage that. But you could also serve on the county committee and you could help to um, enact policy for your other farmers that are in your area. And that actually has a really big impact and a really positive impact on your, um, on your local agricultural community. Those are great opportunities. I like that you hit on, you know, all the different types of positions within the organization, even if they're not, um, you know, currently available and students can always see that um, on usajobs.gov. As far as, um, the locations with those positions is it always open and upfront on that description of like this is for you know this county or this office is that clear in the job descriptions yes it is or it will say that it can be remote work um, we don't have as many options right now that are remote work but um you know certainly because of the pandemic we have learned <laughs> quite a bit about uh, working from home and things like that so i do think that's something we're going to be seeing a little bit more of is the possibility for some remote work Awesome, thank you. Um, so what kind of experiences make candidates a good fit for um, the positions and internships um, with the Farm Service Agency? Well, you know, right in the name, we've got farm <laughs> for Farm Service Agency. So we do like to see people who have um, a rich ag agricultural background, um, you know, so hopefully someone who has been involved in things like FFA or 4-H, um, but also certainly like, you know different societies and clubs and things like that that are available on campus and then we always love people who have had internships and things like that you know people who have definitely gone after opportunities and then you know there's always volunteer work you know people who have worked in like local gardens and things like that um, community gardens and there's just so you know agriculture is such a rich field <laughs> Uh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's so many things that we can see. Mainly, we want to see that you have some kind of background in agriculture and a passion, because uh, I think that that is something that's unique to agriculture is that you kind of can't get by here unless it's really just your bread and butter and, and what you are very much involved in. 
Awesome. So it sounds like you're just looking for um, a variety of experiences and making sure that they're communicating that to you. Is there any way, um, anything specific that students should be including on their resume that would really make that stand out um, when you're looking at applications? Well, I will say, um, you know, I think we hear from a lot of other organizations that they want um, very brief resumes. You know, I've heard in the past people say like, we only want to see one page and we only want to hit the highlights. Um, when it comes to the USDA, we are actually very different and it's really a more is more mentality. So um, we want to see everything and you certainly don't need to keep your resume to just one page. Um, you can put everything on there and anything that would be relevant. We absolutely want to see that. Um, and like you said, it'd be communicated well. Um, so we, we do want to see strong communication skills because again, you will be working with customers and that's important. So um, we certainly don't want anyone to hold back on any information, but um, the more is more mentality is certainly something that's kind of hard to wrap your head around in if you've been used to making your resumes very brief. Um, but we like to hear about all of your experiences and, and anything that is relevant to the agricultural field. Yeah, there's definitely a difference in that federal resume versus, um, you know, the private sector resume. So um, for the federal resumes, you said the more, you know, the merrier. Um, is there a certain page limit that students should expect? So like maybe trying to at least keep it like under three pages or is there really no, um, no page There is limit? no limit. <laughs> Uh, and I will say, um, I mentioned earlier, usajobs.gov, there are some really excellent resume templates on there. And then they also have um, a really good YouTube channel where they talk about putting together a resume um, and what they're looking for. And really, there is no limit. I've seen resumes that are 15 pages long. I've seen resumes that are, resumes that are three pages long. And both those people got jobs. So um, I would say it's really more about that effective communication within the resume. Um, that you were getting across the, you know, what the experiences were and the impact that they had. Awesome. And just to clarify here, students, if you're interested in the private sector, you would still follow that one page format, but anything federal government, definitely um, listen to the feedback that Greer's had of the more is merrier, you know, include all the information that you can. Um, so my last question for you today, um, what advice do you have for students who um, might be starting to search for jobs and internships in the near future? Um, my main advice, um, again, is being not shy. You know, if you see someone, I don't know anyone in the um, agricultural world, and this goes for private sector, federal government, state government, they're all friendly. Um, you know, I see all these people at conferences and things like that. And everyone, everyone is just so friendly and willing to help. So I would say don't be shy and, and just don't be afraid to reach out. Um, Cause I think that that personal touch, you know, making a phone call, um, dropping a personal note, dropping um, an email, all of those really make a difference and help make you stand out. Um, I've had people come up to me at career fairs and you know, they already have their resume printed off and give it to me and we have a conversation and that goes so much farther than, um, you know, someone who just kind of surreptitiously slips the resume on the table and doesn't say anything and doesn't engage. So I would say um, that personal touch of, of just being able to, you know, make a one on one connection um, just goes so much farther than um, than kind of remaining nameless or faceless in the crowd because um, you can have the best resume in the world but it won't sell you quite as much as that connection awesome thank you so much for serving as our herbert employer of the day today greer we've really appreciated um, you sharing your advice to students and hearing about the great opportunities that the farm service agency has okay well i'm so happy to be here thank you all